We have made it to flute Q&A, Q&A number 20. We've made it 20 flute Q&As. So this is number 20 and we've got four questions from four great, I assume you're great people. You ask great questions, so you're probably great people. My name is Jane Kavanagh. I'm a flute teacher. I live in Australia, in Sydney. So I teach the flute to students online in the Flute Academy. And I love teaching players like you, so adults like you, how to make tiny little tweaks to your playing that instantly improve your playing because I'm teaching you actually proper technique of playing. All right, so let's go with the questions. Oh, to ask a question, go to www.flute.school slash ask. Okay, the four questions come from Walter, Krista, Diane, and Kirsty. The first one from Walter, hang on, I'm running out of hands. <laughs> the first one from Walter says, Hi Jane, I have seen your YouTube video about how to play before reading music. That's how to learn to play the flute before learning to read music. I'm 60 years old and want to learn the flute with absolutely no knowledge at all. You made me curious. Do you think I have a chance to do that even if I'm no longer a kid? Short answer, yes, 100% definitely. Now, the more elaborated answer for you. Uh, the, the video that Walter is talking about, I will uh, put a link below this question so that you can uh, see that video. It talks about uh, the reasons why it's good to learn to play the flute. So get your way around the flute, know how to blow properly, hold it, play notes, play a couple of melodies, a couple of scales. Why to learn to do that before learning to read music. You'll see more in that video in the link, but basically it gives you... Uh, not to <laughs> basically don't do too much at once. There's so many things, so much complexity to learning the flute that if you actually uh, spend the time learning the flute properly, it gives you the awareness of learning to listen to yourself before then you add the complexity of learning to read and it will benefit you forever. Okay. That's very loud. I wonder if you can hear that. It's a truck. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, now, Walter, 100% yes, definitely. Now, I've just made some notes here for you. There's another video, Walter, that you might like to watch, and it's, uh, I made it a couple of years, a few years ago, actually. It's about, it's called, Is Learning to Play the Flute Easier as a Child? And it addresses some of the things that you're probably wanting to know. You know, the pros and cons of learning as a child versus an adult. So I'll put a link to you, for you, below this question as well. So you can go and have a look at that. Um, now, the reason that, I 100% think you are a perfect candidate for learning to play the flute. A few reasons. Uh, adults have a bit of a superpower, a, a double-edged sword superpower. So adults have an awareness about them that kids don't have. So think about a kid that's learning to play the flute. They, as you can imagine, they just kind of go step after step, day by day, week after week, year after year, don't really think about what they're doing, they just get better and woo, they can play. Um, but behind the scenes of that, that amazingly talented and um, fast progress kid learning the flute or any instrument, behind the scenes of that, there is a teacher that knows what they're doing and is encouraging, a good relationship between the teacher and the kid. Uh, there is also a parent or two that is encouraging and can pay for lessons with a good teacher and helps keep the child on track and motivated. Now, not every kid has that opportunity. So when you see a kid develop so quickly, it's not every kid that has that. It's just the ones that stand out that you go, oh, wow, that's amazing. Learn so much faster than an adult. For you, on the other hand, being an adult, you can manufacture that... Um, that encouragement. So you get to choose your flute teacher. You get to be aware of your motivation and why you want to learn to keep you motivated for the long term. You can choose who you hang around with. Choose your friends. Uh, you can't choose your family, but you can choose who you share your flute learning with. And so you can make sure that they're encouraging people. So kids don't have that sense, that don't have that ability to control their surroundings. They can't control their financial things. Uh, they can't control a lot of things. You as an adult, you can. So you can put yourself in a position to become a sponge for learning like kids can. You also have the ability to look up on YouTube anything that you don't know. 
I mean, kids can do that too, but they generally aren't as self-motivated as adults are. So this is, the reason it's a double-edged sword and the reason it's a super, superpower, the double-edged sword is that your awareness can trick you. It can trick you up because, trip you up because you are aware of all the things that you can't do yet. A kid doesn't normally care or even think about that. They're just like kind of oblivious to that, mostly. You are aware of all the things you can't do that and you think you're not making progress. But it's really important that you value your little increments of progress and you just go one, you get, get yourself a good teacher, either online or real life, um, have a flute that works, uh, you're already motivated, so you're kind of good there, and then just go one step at a time, follow the path, and try not to think too far into the future. Of course, you can use the future as, as, as motivation for where you want to be eventually, but never compare yourself to that future. Just go one step at a time. You totally will get there, totally. Uh, the fact that you're even asking this question means that you've got the mindset to be able to do it because you're aware of the situation. Uh, okay, there was something else I wanted to tell you, I think. Oh, yeah. I think I sort of covered it. The, re the reason it's your superpower is because you've got control over it. And that's something that adults can do with their, their mindset that kids generally um, can't do or mostly don't do. Okay, the next, hopefully that helps you. The next question comes from Krista. I like your name. I have trouble uh, with doing fast, smooth changes between D and C sharp. Oh, I just realized something. When I... When I was preparing the answers with this question, Krista, I think you were, I was thinking you were talking about D and C sharp here. But then I just realized, of course, you're talking about these ones. Now, the reason that I just had that epiphany and realized it was the lower one, not the higher one, is because the lower one's harder. And of course, I think that's what you're going to be asking in this Q&A. So, you already know probably that the reason that you have difficulty uh, changing smoothly between D and C sharp is because you have one, two, three, four, five, six fingers down, and then you all those six fingers come up and one finger goes down. Now you need to get those six fingers and that one finger switch at exactly the same time. Exactly the same time. Otherwise, it will not be smooth, which I believe is your problem. So this is an example of not smooth. Oh, sorry. I accidentally made that smooth. <laughs> Let me try that again. There you go. Or So there's a little lump in between. A lump, a little, you know, chunkiness to the switch. So that's what happens if you don't uh, you don't switch your fingers at exactly the same time. So what's happening is we've got a little bit of a calibration error in your fingers. Now, what this I'm going to show you an exercise, and this is one of the exact exercises that I teach in the Faster Fingers module of the 45 Day Flute Transformation, which is exactly that. It's 45 days of lessons, and it gets you a transformation. It's part of the Flute Academy. I'll put a link for you below this uh, video. I mean, yeah, below your question in case you want to find out more. So in the Faster Fingers module, there's a bunch of exercises, and one of them is... Well, this is the, the beginning of this exercise to get you started. You need to work out which finger it is that is lagging. So there's going to be one of those six fingers coming up or this finger coming down. So you've got seven options. One of these fingers is going to be lagging. And you need to figure out which one it is. It could even be more than one. But there is at least one finger lagging. So you're going to go one by one. We've got seven, oh, seven, seven options. We're going to go seven runs of this exercise. So first we're going to start with your thumb. And it's it's probably lagging rather than being early. So you're going to um, anticipate your thumb doing the change. And see if that helps the smoothness. Do it a few times. And then we'll move on to the middle finger. And we're going to anticipate that finger when you change. And see if that helps. Do it a few times. And then anticipate this finger, then this one, then this one, then this one, then this one. You will find the, <laughs> the culprit. You will find the culprit finger. And then all you have to do is keep anticipating that laggy finger. And um, then just keep doing that. And it will, be, it will very quickly, like within a day or two, become a habit. So there you go. 
that's one of the exercises in the faster fingers module okay the next question <laughs> i meant to say question not question sorry uh how can i improve my third octave this is asked by diane now there is let me just have a look at these two points that i've written here no, 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 no. okay cool so diane the way to improve your third octave is to learn the real way of playing high notes so this is also in the flute academy it's in the high notes module so days four to days eight days four to eight so day four five six seven eight there's a short lesson on each day in that and it's 100 percent dedicated to teaching you the real way to play high notes in a nutshell high notes if you are pulled back like this it's the worst thing you can do for your high notes the worst thing because it tightens your mouth your embouchure and you might find diane maybe this isn't you but anyone else watching this if you're pulling back and going yeah yeah it works for high notes because it, it's actually forcing them out but it's a it's a vicious cycle because the more you pull back the tighter you get the tighter you get the more fatigued you get the more fatigued you get the more tighter you try and get and so it's like a race to the bottom of tightness you for the real way of playing high notes you want to be the exact opposite you want to have these corners instead of pulling back you want to have them coming forward ever so slightly relax all this and the corners of your mouth come slightly forward that is the beginning of learning the real way of playing high notes and it's quite miraculous so i'll give you an example so i'll do the real way of playing high notes here and you get a lot of control when you learn this real way of playing high notes now let me do the same thing but instead of doing the real way of playing high notes with the slight pout i'm going to be pulling back and going tighter for the high notes You'll see that I can't move between those uh, octaves, they were A's, you, I can't move between the octaves anywhere near as quickly or smoothly. And the sound won't be as clear. Okay, here we go. So that was, I, I wasn't actually faking any of that. All of, <laughs> I wasn't faking the slowness, I wasn't faking the lack of tone quality. All I did was pull this back and tighten and the rest happens um, automatically in a, like, in a bad way. So Diane, that is what I want you to do. See if you can get tension out of your mouth and go ever so slightly pouty. Uh, there was something else that I, no, that's it. That were, they were all my notes for you, Diane. So I hope that helps you. Okay, the next and last question comes from Kirsty. She says, how do I play the flute place? <laughs> Which I just, Kirsty, I love your question. It's like, ooh, where do I start? And then I had, a th I had to think about your question and I have the perfect place for you to start. So recently, so a couple of months ago, I wrote a, an article. So um, I don't know if you know the company Tom Play. They have sheet music and stuff. They asked me to write an article for their website. And I said yes, because I love writing and I'm so keen to help flute players around the world. So I'm going to link to that article uh, for you below this, be below this question and it's called the top 10 tips for absolute beginners. So I want you to have a look at these top 10 tips for absolute beginners and you are going to see in there uh, how to choose a good flute, how to choose a good teacher, uh, how to work out what motivates you because motivation is important because it gives longevity and sustainability to your, um, your energy and effort when you're playing. Um, that makes it sustainable. Uh, the number one thing for you to learn when you're learning the flute is embouchure. So Kirsty, I want you to make sure that you learn an, a very, very good embouchure before you even learn how to play anything on the flute. So just use, just use the top. This is called the head joint. Put your hand over the end for a, a, a lower note and if you have a look at this article that I've written, it's going to point you to different videos that are re this is really going to help you with your beginner flute learning. The most important thing is that you form your embouchure correctly. So, I mean, I wish it was as easy for me to say, just do what I do. There are, there are specific things to make your embouchure the right shape. And so you just uh, already got a bit of a tip before. 
don't pull back. Um, at the same time, you don't want to be too round like that. Uh, in the last Q&A, actually, someone said, how do I improve my tone? And there were some clues, well, not clues, there were some tips in there that you might actually get, like to go and watch. So in Q&A number 19, uh, it's a, I think it was 19, not, if it wasn't 19, it was 18, about um, the three things that make up a good embouchure. So basically, the size of the hole in your mouth needs to be the right size, in other words, small enough. The, uh, the shape of the hole needs to be the right shape, so not pulled back and not too round. And the position, so the placement of this, needs to be exactly the right placement for you to actually get a good sound. So go and check out that Q&A question. Uh, so embouchures, your number one, number one thing to concentrate on getting right, like a million percent. I know that's not a real thing. Hundred percent, hundred and one percent. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> you know what I mean. It's important. Uh, in the article, you'll also see a video that links you to um, how to hold the flute with correct posture, which is your second thing to do. Uh, and when I say posture, I don't mean like standing up straight. I mean everything, your arms, your fingers, your hand position, your head position, that's all posture. Uh, what the, and the reason it's important is because what you do now in these few weeks of your, your, these few months, no, weeks of your first learning, first learning the flute, these will stick with you and they will become a habit. You can undo habits later on, but it's way harder to undo habits than it is to form them correctly the right, um, the right way first go. So get your embouchure good. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be good. And I'll explain more in that article that I mentioned. Um, so that's, that's it. I actually um, answered everything with my half of a flute, third of a flute. So I might play you a little song. So that was a great demonstration of what not to do. I didn't breathe at all before playing. <laughs> I'll play you morning, my Greg. That was supposed to be. Oh, that was a terrible demo. I would like to do that again for you. The reason that morning is in my head is because I was teaching some beginners during the week and I show them how the flute can play low notes. Etc. Medium notes. And I play morning and then high. Just to give them a, a a little insight into what the flute sounds like because beginner kids that is don't always know what the flute sounds like they might have just seen it so that was Q&A number 20 don't forget to ask a question come to www.flute.school ask and I will answer your question in an upcoming q and I answer all the questions but I answer them in order that I get and there's a few in the queue so you'll need to wait a number of weeks maybe even a couple of months to get your question answered but I will answer it and I will notify you of when your question has been answered. Okay, see you later.